Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. Are you planning to take the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam? If that's the case, you will need to prepare hard for it. However, if you utilize the right resources and tips, you can significantly increase your chances of passing the exam. Today's video is going to be a guide and a list of resources that can help you clear your AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam. As always, if you have any questions as you watch this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also, let us know if you've either taken the exam or if you're planning to take this exam and let us know your experience as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Let's jump into it. Firstly, you're gonna to need to know what things you need to know about the exam. Once you have an idea about what will be asked on the exam, you can study better. It's a test with a 720 score and 65 questions. You'll have a total of 130 minutes to answer all of these questions. And there's also five unscored questions as well. These questions won't affect the marks, so you can keep it till the end and you don't need to worry about it too much. During the test, you can spend about two minutes per question before moving forward. In the end, you will have a few minutes left where you can check the questions again. I also can't stress enough how important it is to know the course content. You should know what will be asked in the exam and how you can get the best out of it. To have a better understanding about the course content, let's have a look at the exam breakdown, starting with design resilient architectures. Design resilient architectures will be about 30% of the exam, and that will cover topics such as AWS global infrastructure, which will cover regions, availability zones, edge locations, regions, edge, caches, etc., etc. You'll also need to be able to answer questions about multi-tiered architectures within a virtual private cloud. You'll deal with questions involving Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront, disaster recovery and business continuity strategies, decoupled and event-driven architectures, and AWS storage services. The next part of the breakdown is going to be to design high-performing architectures, which is going to be about 28% of the exam. This will cover auto scaling and application and network elastic load balancers, Amazon EC2, ECS, and Elastic Beanstalk, storage performance with the Elastic File System and Amazon S3 features, also VPC networking components, AWS databases, high availability across Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon Aurora, and Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator. The next category covers designing secure applications and architectures which is gonna be about 24% of the exam. This will involve a deep dive on AWS identity and access management, Amazon Cognito for web and mobile security, AWS organizations and service control policies, protecting application with AWS web application firewall, firewall manager and shield, understanding AWS logging mechanisms, audit, monitor and evaluate with AWS config and AWS CloudTrail, and data encryption using AWS key management services. And the last part of the breakdown is to design cost-optimized architectures, and this is gonna be about 18% of the exam. This covers AWS storage costs across Amazon S3, Glacier, EFS, Storage Gateway, and AWS Backup. Also, savings plans and reserved instances for compute instances, and cost optimization across the network infrastructure. Now let's look at the experience that you're gonna need. Now, there's no mandatory experience level that needed to take the exam. However, it's highly recommended that you should have at least one year of experience in knowing and running things on AWS. AWS has many services, and you should know about all the services that are available on AWS, which are directly related to the architecture. Luckily, there is a free tier available on AWS, where certain amounts and types of resources will be free for one year. So you can certainly use this free tier to try and get your hands dirty on AWS itself. And of course, you can always take a course. Now, you don't need to necessarily go with a paid course. For example, you can find many great resources on YouTube if you want to increase your chances of cracking the exam. Or, of course, you can go with a paid course. The paid courses are available on websites like Udemy and Lynda. You can browse on them and find the best suitable course for you. Most of them have a free video available. So you can see that free video and then decide whether you want to go with that particular course or maybe you want to go with another course. You might also want to look at the reviews and the comments before making that purchase because if you could find people leaving comments who are in your position and it's helping them, then I think that's a great sign that it might be very beneficial to you as well. Now, if you stick around to the end of the video, 
I'm gonna guide you to some of the best courses that you can consider taking. Another great tool to help you pass the exam are mock tests and exams. If you go with a paid course on Udemy, for example, then there's very likely gonna be many practice tests that you can take that are associated with that and attached to that. And taking these types of exams will help teach you to be ready for the exam. Chances are, if you're doing really well on these practice exams, chances are you're ready to actually take the exam. Now that we've discussed courses and mock tests, let's look at some exam tips. Remember that you have enough time. Don't rush. Make sure that you read the question properly. Maybe even read it twice so that you didn't misread it the first time. This will really help you understand the question before you answer it. But also keep in mind not to waste too much time on one question. This may sound a little counterintuitive to the previous point, but don't spend more than two minutes on one question or you may find yourself really tight on time. And if you do find yourself stuck on a question and there's a question where you feel like you need to spend more than two minutes, you can use the exam features like mark for review and this will allow you to review that question at the end of the exam. Now remember, when you're taking the exam, it's not just about the theory. Most of the questions will be based on practical knowledge rather than theoretical. So you really should open AWS and practice things, get hands on on there. So make sure to get some real practice before taking the exam. Now, as promised, let's have a look at some of the great courses that you can take. One great course that you can utilize is the Ultimate AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate 2021 by Stephane Marek. You can also look at a Cloud Guru and also a free course camp. I'm gonna include links to these in the description down below. I'm also gonna guide you to some great practice tests and mock exams as well. Starting with the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Practice Exams by John Bonzo. The Knowledge Hut is also a great free resource and Simply Learn is another great resource. Again, I'm gonna include links to all of these in the description down below. And I'm sure you can find many more courses and practice exams online. So there we have it. There are some tips and resources to help you pass your AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. Also, let us know if you're thinking of taking the exam or if you've already taken the exam. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to click that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.